Hey everybody, it's Dr. Perkins, your board certified OBGYN and welcome to another episode. Today we're talking about how do you know if you have PCOS? By the end of this video, you will learn what is PCOS, why do people develop PCOS, and what you can do about it. So what is PCOS? PCOS actually stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome. This is very different from PCO, which is polycystic ovaries, and it's very different from having a cyst on your ovary. Let's talk more about this. Polycystic ovarian syndrome is a condition. It is not a disease. It is a condition that comprises of multiple different things that could go wrong hormonally in your body. Each presentation is completely different. That means you can have five different females with PCOS and they all physically look different and their symptoms are completely different. Each PCOS is unique to that individual. PCOS affects up to 10% of females in the United States. Now, by clinical practice, I believe that that number is a lot greater and there are a lot of women who are not getting diagnosed but are suffering from hormonal issues linked with PCOS. PCOS can be diagnosed by different standards and there are really three main options of criteria for diagnosing this condition that are available to us. The one that I recommend and is actually used by a lot of OBGYNs is called the Rotterdam criteria. Of this, there are three subsets of problems that could go wrong in your body and two of the three needs to be present for a diagnosis to be made. So let's break this down and follow along. I'll show you some images so that this can be a little bit more clear for you. The first thing is that you may have a condition called hyperandrogenism. It's a lot of words, I know. But what it really means is that your body incorporates or has way more testosterone and male hormones, also known as androgens, than the normal female. With that, you may have symptoms of hair growth or excessive hair growth on your body. More commonly, you might have hair growth on your upper lip, you can have hair growth on your chin, on your chest, on your thighs, on your legs, that are a little bit more than what the typical female would have. When we do testing for PCOS, we are able to check to see what your levels of androgens or male hormones are. Those levels can be increased, and while the increase may be due to several different types of diseases, PCOS is one that needs to be considered. Secondly, a person with PCOS may have something called anovulation. This is a dysfunction when it comes to ovulation. Let's talk about what normal ovulation is like and what PCOS ovulation is like. In our model here, I like to start with anatomy 101. That way I know that we are following along and that we're learning together in a way that kind of makes sense, okay? So here's our model, vagina, cervix, uterus, two fallopian tubes, and an ovary. Your ovary matures an egg that you're born with at birth and matures it in a way that once it's prepared, it pops through your ovary, literally. This is a cool thing with medicine. If we take a look on the inside, when you ovulate and we look in your ovary, we will see a damage to the outer shell where the egg actually physically popped out of. The fallopian tubes then catch that egg almost like in midair and grabs it, holds onto it, and starts to move the egg along. That is a process of ovulation. Now in people with PCOS, there are several things that could go wrong and cause ovulatory dysfunction. That means that your ovaries are just not normally functioning the way they should. You're not ovulating the way you should. Your ovaries are not producing hormones the way they should. And your body's not responding systematically to the function and what should be normal function of your ovaries. Now that takes care of the second of the two criteria 
for PCOS diagnosis. The third is having polycystic ovaries. Now, I'm gonna put this model aside here, but if you are enjoying our conversation today, please share in the comments what your experience has been with PCOS, or even if you have or know someone with PCOS and what they're going through. It is a very, very common condition, so let's share and talk about it. Now this third criteria is one that is almost very confusing. Because this condition is called polycystic ovarian syndrome, you may think that, well, if I have PCOS, then I have poly, a lot, of cysts on my ovaries but that is not the case. Actually, PCOS is more of a misnomer and it's not very accurate or an accurate name for the condition. However, it has been shown that many people with PCOS do in fact have polycystic ovaries. Now, take a look at this image here. What you're seeing is an ovary that has many circles within it, those circles are follicles or cysts. In each of those cysts is one egg preparing and maturing or preparing for maturation really so that it can be ovulated and your body can go through its normal processes. In PCOS, there are many of these little circles or follicles because there's not enough hormonal response to cause those maturing eggs to actually fully mature and ovulate. So what you have is a cycle of having many eggs that start to mature but never really get to the end of maturation so they're not ever really ovulated. Now what happens is that if your eggs are not ovulating then you're not having periods. And so what happens with people with PCOS is that you can go very long periods of time without getting a menstrual cycle. Long periods of time, meaning that I have patients who have gone years, five years, six years, 10 years, these long periods of time and not have a period. And they're not menopausal. They're not on birth control that prevents you from getting periods. They have their uterus. They have their ovaries, but they're just not functioning. This overall is very unhealthy for any female in a reproductive age, you should always have menstrual cycles. You should have menstrual cycles every month. You should be able to clear out and clean any built up tissue that happens from month to month. You should clear that out and be able to start over new. If you're not ovulating, you're not able to produce a period and that cleaning is never done. This overall is very unsafe for a female. Why? Well, the more that your uterus builds up tissue on the inside that should be cleaned off with a period, and it doesn't, this creates an environment where cancer can form over time. Our biggest concern though is that with PCOS, your hormones are so imbalanced that you have an excess amount of estrogens influence in your body and influence in your system. A lot of estrogens equal increased risk of cancer. There are many ways that this excess estrogens can happen as well. One way is that your body produces it. A second way, which is very common in PCOS patients, is that excess estrogens are coming from fat cells. This is part of the reason why losing weight and not being in an obese state is a very important and key factor to helping PCOS. If you have a lot of additional fat cells, they're producing estrogens, and those estrogens can also cause your normal internal production of estrogens to shut down. If this happens, you create a system of being hormonally imbalanced. There are other criteria for diagnosing PCOS as well. One by the NIH, another by the Androgen Excess and PCOS Society. Your provider may choose whichever criteria works for them, but in general, these three things, hyperandrogenism, ovulatory dysfunction or anovulation, 
and polycystic ovaries are a part of that diagnostic criteria. Now, how do you get tested for this? Well, in addition to checking for testosterone and other hormones, your doctor can actually do a clinical assessment as well as laboratory and an ultrasound to give you a diagnosis of PCOS. Talk to your doctors if you are concerned or if you think that you might be having symptoms having to do with PCOS. I surely hope that you've enjoyed our conversation today and I thank you so much for being here. And as always, I love talking to you and helping you learn about your bodies. I would love for you to leave some comments below and if you're so intrigued, there is a link in the description area that gives you access to my Hormones Don't Lie ebook. This is completely free to you. There are no obligations, just sharing information that might be worthwhile and may help you on your journey to hormone balance. Thank you for being here. I'm Dr. Perkins. See you next time.